I had been drafted into the army for one year. Uh, I wanted to go in and <clears throat> the uh, draft went on, and if you passed the physical exam, everybody was being drafted. I think the age was uh, 18, to, and I, I was had been drafted. And I was at uh, Camp Wheeler in Macon, Georgia, and at Pearl Harbor, but people came running around through the barracks and everything, saying they bombed Pearl Harbor. They bombed Pearl and. The soldiers there, we, I mean, we were uh, fairly well educated and you know, <laughs> where in the world is Pearl Harbor, <laughs> you know? And the only people there that knew where Pearl Harbor was was the cadre, the, the soldiers that were there training us. But they, we, we later, later found out where Pearl Harbor was and the Japanese certainly knew where it was. <laughs> and uh, I think they've, they've sunk... Um, what was that battleship they sunk in the perb and in, uh, in the harbor there Arizona. at Arizona? Sunk the house and and that blocked the harbor. They couldn't get in, and it, it was really a tra tragic um, situation. Which, and as I understand, I, as I remember, uh, they were Japanese were in in Washington D.C. at the time. They was negotiating. But I don't remember what it was. Maybe it was, maybe they wanted to sell us some uh, manufactured goods, and we wanted to sell them some apples. I don't know what it was, but but uh, they were had some negotiation going on there, and uh, they got on plane. They they went on back to Japan. It, I didn't know why we didn't retain them some hostages or something, but but uh, they didn't ask me anything about it. <laughs> See, I was already taking basic training. I was at Camp Wheelan, Macon, Georgia, and uh, I uh, really hadn't... Uh, I... I uh, I was was in the infantry, and shortly after that, I was transferred to the uh, Signal Corps, and I didn't. I don't know why that was either, but but, the, but I went, left the inter, infantry and went to the Signal Corps, and uh, I uh, um, had some training in that and. I got to uh, <coughs> doing the war. I it was a voluntary situation. You had to. Uh, they called it a, 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 a ground aircraft uh, observer. And when when I got over seas, that was a situation where. You, you would go in with these LSTs, the big big boats, and they'd put the ramp down, and you'd run on the beach, and then it would. And they had a, had a, <coughs> the radars were set up, but uh, there, there was mountainous country in uh, New Guinea. Uh, it was the first place I went. I spent about thirty months in New Guinea and the Philippines. But we, uh, uh, they would sit at these ground observers. We would get out on the other side of the mountain that has where they where the radio, ra excuse me, the ra radar wouldn't give the wouldn't oper couldn't operate it, didn't penetrate, it didn't go around the mountain, <laughs> and the signal went in a straight line, and and we would would set up uh, and on and <coughs> give uh, uh, with a radio uh, communicate back to the uh, uh, the anti aircraft guns and the uh, at night time would be uh, in uh, the uh, signal light you know the searchlights and uh, 
we also went to school to learn what is the difference between the Japanese, the sound of the motors for the Japanese and the Americans and, and the silhouettes. We could see the uh, outline of the planes. That, I think that, uh, 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 and, and, uh, well, we could determine whether it was a bombers or whether it were fighter planes coming over. And, and that's what I did. I was, I was in that uh, branch of the service, or, but it was in the Signal Corps. We would get, I don't know whether you remember, he called them, he got another name for them now, but they, these were little fast PT boats. And uh, the Navy would take, uh, we, we, we went in at, at, on a beach and they, we would get on the, the uh, PT boats. When I say we, I'm talking about four men and radio. And we'd have, carry, carry some food too. And they would take us to down the coast and let us out where we would take whatever we had to radio and we'd take, take the, that in. We'd get, go in with a little um, um, a, a small boat paddling and uh, take, get, get to the place where we were supposed to be, where they had designated for us to be. I remember one time, uh, a fellow on the PT boat said, uh, where, where, where are we taking you? <laughs> so I told him, they, they, he said, well, if everything goes well, we go dr drive those Japs right be <laughs> <laughs> you are. You better get out of the way. <laughs> but uh, that never happened. It didn't. It didn't happen. We we uh, ne never had any casualties in our outfit. We were just a contingent of a uh, platoon, four men, at uh, the, the uh, where, where uh, the company and the platoon where they were back at headquarters. They they had, were attacked by the uh, Japs, but uh, we never uh, never had any problem with it. They took care of us somewhere or another. New Guinea was a, uh, a very, it was a large, long island. It, it fit over the cap of, uh, of Australia, and the Japanese had already got, when, when the Americans came over there, the Japanese had already been t taken control of New Guinea. And it was just a mountainous island. And uh, we, uh, when we got over there, we made several invasions of New Guinea because MacArthur was a uh, good, he never did, uh, Put uh, put invasions where they had had to make them. He didn't go into um, uh, the areas where they were. We, we would uh, they would the Japanese would be in camped or taking possession of this area, or we would go west of them and cut off their supplies, bringing the supplies down. And then, uh, then after they, they they would pull out, pull they would pull out because they had to get out of there. They didn't have any supplies, and then we would take another. But we made three, four, two or th three or four invasions at different places in New Guinea. Now that was just a, a jungle island. There was no there were no towns. I think they had names on the map. But uh, I think they were probably a missionary there or something like that. But it wasn't any towns. It was just. And then we left uh, New Guinea, and I remember, you remember uh, General MacArthur says, uh, told when he, he got him out of the Philippines, when the war started, they had to bring him out, brought him out on one of these PT boats. Uh, and. Uh, uh, <laughs> He said, "I shall return." And he, he, he when he invaded uh, 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 
uh, the Philippines at um, Leyte, L-E-Y-T-E, I think it was the name. And it was right in the middle of the Philippines. And MacArthur made that invasion, and my outfit went in that at the same time that MacArthur went there. And at that time, <coughs> the uh, that was right in the, the middle of this Philippine Islands, and I think they say they might have a thousand islands that fell up the Philippines, but a contingency went north to Luzon, and I was in contingency that went south. Uh, we went to, uh, uh, I was at, at, the end, at the end of the war, uh, I was at a, a place, uh, an island that was the westernmost uh, island of the uh, Philippines. It wasn't, a, wasn't a far away from, from the uh, continental uh, Asia, but uh, it was Palawan was the name of the island, and we uh, that's where I was at the end of the war. And they, uh, when the war ended, uh, they had all these troops overseas, they had them, they had them all over in Europe and you know, in, uh, in uh, the Pacific. And they didn't really didn't have any uh, ships to bring them home because they'd converted all the ships that they had. Uh, I mean, the United States they could convert them to war vessels, and. Uh, I know I came came back. They had a port of debarkation. I've forgotten the name of that in the Philippines. And uh, I came back on a Dutch ship. The Dutch ship was uh, had a Indian crew. They had Dutch officers. When I say Indian, I don't mean uh, American Indians. They were from India. They couldn't speak uh, Dutch, and the Dutch couldn't speak whatever language they spoke. And it, it was a, uh, uh, and, and the, the, sh the boat itself was a small, sh small ship. Uh, reason, and I know when we were coming back, the, dying, the ship broke down in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, and we were just we drifted there for. I don't know, they, they had to they had to send another ship out because those Indians didn't know how to do anything uh, didn't know anything about repair or repairing that that ship and the uh, officers of the they was they didn't know anything about uh, the mechanics either so they had to send um, someone they they, uh, they they got the um, <laughs> they got these. Um, People, I don't know where they came from. I can't remember, but uh, I know that the, the Dutch uh, pe people, the people, they got they were on the on the on the uh, amplifying system on the ship. And they, they'd always start something, I guess, to get your attention. Now hear this. Now hear this. And they said, Now hear this. Do we have any? Uh, soldiers on here that were in in the tank corps that knows anything about a big engine, and, I, I, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I remember that. That's what, and the, these these boys, boys went down there. And they said, "Will you re please report to the engine room?" And they went down there and they fiddled with the, whatever they did, but they they got the, the engine started. The, the, the tank uh, mechanics. Uh, but <laughs> but uh, they were the heroes of the of the boat too. I remember. But they they got they got that boat started, and we came on back to um, California. I went in in October the fifteenth, and December the what was the December the Pearl Harbor was uh, de December the seventh one. Our allies, I say this: England, France, Italy. I don't think Spain, was in it, but uh, the Western European countries were being 
bombed by, by uh, Germ the Germans, and they were, they, 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 I know that was sort of an expression going, said, how in the world is that, that British, uh, the United Kingdom over there, how are they they're still floating? And <laughs> they about be, should be sunk by now. And I guess they thought that we were going to uh, eventually be in the war. And they, as I told you, I, try, I wanted to volunteer for the Navy, being from Georgetown, I was on the waterfront. But uh, I wasn't, wasn't, didn't pass the physical exam, and so I was drafted. But it was the draft was for one year. They, uh, I, the uh, government just didn't want the. Um, to, they, they didn't when they, if they had to go to war, they wanted to have feet on the ground and be, be running and have trained personnel. But I, I would, I, so I went in in the draft. If I, if you, the enlistment time was three years, and I. I just I was thought I'd just go in there and get my time served over for one year and go and when I, after the war I did go back to law school but uh, it was a little leaning time there. We had a mustering out pay. I had a friend that I met on the boat coming back, a boy by the name of uh, uh, Bob Cannon from Hemingway. And we were we were sitting on the deck coming back. It was still a blackout because it was right. At, we, we had enough points to come back. It puts you on some on a point system. If you end the service for uh, some say for twelve that twelve months, that gave you twelve points. And if you were overseas, if you were stationed overseas in a non-combat area, you got two points for that. And if you were in a uh, combat zone, you got three points each each month, you know. And I've forgotten, but but I had enough points to be one of the first ones to come back. Uh, get a boat to come back is what it was <laughs> from the Philippines. It, uh, so uh, when I came back to Georgetown, uh, Georgetown has always been a good place to live in, and we. Uh, we must not have done a great deal to break the law. We we were um, well. My brother was mayor of Georgetown, not that time, but, it, but you know he he was mayor of Georgetown for um, uh, fourteen years, and I uh, and I after I ran for the. Um, House of Representatives, and I sir, that was before we had the district. It was a whole county, but two two reg representatives from Georgetown. I was elected on the first put out. I never had I never had a runoff, and so we were pretty well, um, lack of a better word, accepted in Georgetown. And uh, uh, but the people were just as nice as they ever were. I mean, uh, uh, and <clears throat> I met, I'd say I met this boy from Hemingway. We were on the boat coming back. He was a Clemson graduate, graduate, and I didn't hold that against him. <laughs> so, uh, but he, uh, he and I got to be good friends because we had just missed a semester couldn't, didn't, couldn't go. We had to wait on the next semester side. We had, had mustering out pay. I think it was about three hundred dollars, and uh, that we, we had six hundred dollars between us, and so we had enough money to to party a little bit and just kill time until we until the school started. Another semester came by, and both of us went to law school and roomed together in law school and. Um, we were very, very, we were very friends until he he passed away. He had a heart attack. We um, 
party. I mean, we, we, neither one of us would get a job. We knew just as soon as the semester started that uh, we were going, going, going back to school. And we had, like I say, we had six hundred dollars, so we didn't do anything but party <laughs> at that time, waiting on the semester to start. And we roomed together when we went to went to Carolina, went to law school. We roomed together, and, uh, and I went. Both of us were going under the GI Bill too. I came back to Georgetown, and my as my brother was practicing law. And uh, I went in his office, and we practiced together. And he passed away, and, but I practiced for 56 years uh, in Georgetown. I retired. I retired because of my uh, this paralegal or secretary. One, I had two secretaries working for me, and she, she, one of them had worked there for, for. 52 years, and the other one was a newcomer. She worked for, she's still working, I think. Uh, she worked for 30, 36 years. I married uh, a Georgetown girl. She was Lee and Reuben. And uh, we, uh, we had three children. Uh, she passed away. I, but I have three children, uh, none of them lawyers, <laughs> but uh, they were in, the, I had one son that finished in um, computer science, and, uh, and he, he's employed with uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield. And uh, I got two, two daughters, both of them were finished in uh, uh, accounting, I guess. One of them works for the federal government. Uh, that that agency that we all love to hate, uh, the FBI. <laughs> the, uh, the IRS, excuse me, I mean the IRS. And uh, the other one uh, worked for Holland's Cancer uh, Clinic down at Charleston, but she uh, didn't. Have, she was an account. She did was an accountant in that department, and uh, only one married. She, they had, I only have one uh, grandchild, one grandson. I was in the Philippines, and, uh, and uh, I know uh, we we had no idea. They thought they had, they dropped some kind of bomb in Nagasaki. I forgot there were two of them that they dropped. I forgot Nagasaki and Okinawa. Or what, what was that? Hiroshima. Hiroshima, yeah. And uh, they talked about the number of uh, casualties that result of each bomb there. But uh, I say, uh, we were in, in the Philippines and uh, anticipating having to in, invade Japan. And they say that, uh, they say that the general cons consensus was that, that if it would have been more people killed both of them, Americans and Japanese, then were killed by the atomic bomb because they were they were well fortified and Japanese were, and we would have had to invade that island, those islands, and uh, but we, that's what we the the, the uh, general consensus was that that's what we were getting ready to do. And I know after the war they said it was a shame that they had to drop that atomic bomb, but I don't believe that there was anybody wearing a uniform that <laughs> felt that it was a shame, I think. You know, I certainly if it wasn't wasted, it wasn't a career. 
uh, my, that's the, uh, I went to a college that didn't didn't have any military in it, uh, so I went in as an enlisted man, and I put in for OCS, and uh, the uh, well, just just people like me, there's so many of them putting in putting in for the OCS. When I got the, the orders, it was an order. My CO called me. I was, we were in, uh, I guess we were in New Guinea, and he said, uh, "Rosen, you this has an order. You're going to have to go. You're going back to the states. You have to get into this OCS uh, school, uh, OCS, whatever they called it." And I said, "No." I said. Uh, I, 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 it was a, some sort of, pre I had a choice to take it or not. I, I don't remember, but, but not, anyway, I asked to see the company commander if he would uh, just uh, notify him that I would not be, content, that I elected not to go. So uh, I didn't go, go to, but uh, I don't feel that the time that I, uh, that any of the soldiers spent there doing war. It was either, the, either the, they were going to be uh, uh, win or we were going to win. I, I <coughs> still think that uh, the United States is uh, uh, the greatest country in the world. Uh, I heard a comedian on the television the other day. He was talking about uh, the uh, United States. It wasn't a comedian, I don't guess. But anyway, he he said, you, "If you, you want to know how the United States feel, uh, uh, how, how the people of the world feel about the United States, you got to use the get theory." And he said, "What? <laughs> that is that you open up the gate and let anybody come in or anybody go out." And he said, the people of the United States aren't leaving the United States, but everybody wants to come here. <laughs> so, so, that, 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 just, just open up the gate and let, let, let them go either way they want to go. You don't have anybody who want to leave the United States. Well, they've got great countries too, but uh, uh, I, I still think we, we, and I think most of the people of the world think that we have, uh, we, uh, we have, uh, I have the, the brains here, yeah, the, they, 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 they inventing things every day, bringing new products to the market, and, and I'm sure that the other countries are too, but, but uh, I don't believe that, um, I don't believe you, would the, get, would the gates open that you'll have <laughs> many people leaving? <laughs> I went to the University of South Carolina, and uh, then I <coughs> uh, went into the service. I didn't go to law school until after the war. I went to, I went to school on GI Bill, but uh, I think I told you about meeting this uh, fellow on the ship coming back. Uh, but. Uh, and I, I, I was um, a, a staff sergeant. That's uh, that's as high as I got. And uh, of course, you know that every, every um, uh, army organization they have so many uh, sergeants, so many master sergeants, so many. Uh, Officers, uh, and uh, that, uh, that that was the, the the bucket was full. That's about as far as I when I got that that, that place. That was just wasn't any more openings.